Hey guys, Chris Dick here. We're in part uh, nine of our uh, SQL tutorials here. And uh, I came across a little error uh, while I was uh, inserting some data and realized that uh, um, I, I just wanted to put in a bunch of names into my students table. Um, and when I run the code, I get these errors here. Okay, now errors always look a little scary because they obviously don't uh, don't conform to what you were expecting. So uh, this this insert statement fails here, and it's because of the column uh, date of birth. Okay, and um, it says cannot insert the value no into the column date of birth. The reason is because we haven't set a default, and if I'm inserting just the first name and last name. Um, let's say I'm inserting it and I don't have date of births at this time, maybe I'm going to fill them in later on. Um, and uh, this happens quite often in, you know, in, uh, in uh, real life scenarios. We maybe just get a list of information that is incomplete and we're going to have to fill them in. So uh, what we want to do is uh, make it as painless as possible when we're inserting the data. Um, I have this list of insert statements with just first name and last name. So what I need to do here is I need to add in a column uh, or a constraint for this for the column uh, date of birth. I can do this in a few different ways. Okay, I can uh, go into uh, the date of birth here, and and you know and just simply type in a constraint right here okay and again I'm using just a, a an arbitrary date that I kind of know for the most part that uh, if I if I see 1900 uh, 0101 um, most of the students as far as I know in my classes uh, in my school are not from that uh, that time period they're not likely to be 216 or 116 years old so I'm going to assume that if I come across that date, it's more likely to be um, to be uh, an invalid date. Okay. So if I did this and uh, did save, okay, I've now got a default value. All right. Um, the problem is that default value, uh, you know, is uh, it was just done through the designer, and it would work. It would just it would be quite fine. Uh, I could just continue on with my work. But I, again, I always want to do some things programmatically. So I'm going to look at how we would uh, achieve this. When it created that um, that uh, constraint, it gave it a name of DF underscore students date of birth. Okay, nothing wrong with that, of course. But uh, in order to do this programmatically, because I'm going to remove it now from the designer, I'm going to close this up. And I'm going to do alter table students, okay, drop constraint, all right, and we're going to name it this, okay, we say we want to drop that constraint, all right, so I drop the constraint, it's done that, if I go back into uh, scripting this table as create, I will now see that there is no constraint there anymore, okay, well, I want to add that constraint because uh, it is actually quite important. So I can just change this, add constraint, and uh, I'm going to give it a default of the same that I did before, okay, 1900-01-01, and uh, I have to specify it's for date of the date of birth column, that is date of birth in students. Okay, so here I'm adding the constraint. I'm calling it students date of birth. I am uh, changing uh, the default value and it's for date of birth. So let's run this statement here. Okay, I've, uh, I've run it. If I again, if I go back into here, script it, uh, get into the create, I'm now going to see that I have a constraint uh, just like I had before. Okay, so 
when I run my statement again, that is my uh, my insert statement, right? I execute that. I've got a whole bunch of rows. I now have lots of data, and there we have it. Okay. Great. Okay, so that is it for this very short tutorial here. Uh, remember to like and share, and I will be moving into part 10 shortly. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.